Welcome to part two of Chemical Equilibrium Review. This review material will focus on example exercises to review and reinforce Q versus K, more challenging exercises that will require the quadratic formula, and employment of the 5% rule or rule of 100 to simplify our calculations, as well as some other tricky equilibrium problems that the beginning student may encounter. It is worth mentioning that the student should have first viewed part one of this review to better grasp these principles. Typically, the beginning student will have to solve several different types of equilibrium exercises. So let's try a type one exercise that requires the quadratic equation. An initial concentration is given and the equilibrium constant is known for this reaction at some temperature. Because there are no products initially present, there is no need for a Q calculation to predict shift. It will shift to the right. Thus, when writing equilibrium expressions for the concentrations, the concentration of reactant will decrease and the concentrations of products will increase. Substituting these equilibrium expressions into the law of mass action and rearranging, we realize we need to employ the quadratic equation, which will yield two solutions. The negative value is extraneous because we cannot have negative concentrations. Solving for the final concentrations of products and reactants completes the exercise. A quick check using the equilibrium concentrations confirms they are correct. Type 2 exercises do not use the quadratic equation. In this example, we are given a reaction, an equilibrium constant, an initial concentration of reactant, and are again asked for equilibrium concentrations. There are no products initially present, and therefore no need for a Q calculation to predict shift. It will shift to the right. Thus, the changes, loss of reactant and increase for products, coupled with the stoichiometric coefficients and initial concentration, yields the final expressions for change, which can be substituted into the law of mass action. As is, this expression produces a messy equation that will require the quadratic formula, but fortunately there is an easier way to solve this problem. First, we need to recognize that AB will dissociate very little due to the small ka value, and therefore X, which is the change, will be very small when compared to the initial concentration of 1.25 molar. Thus, the denominator can be simplified, which is to say we can ignore the loss of 2X because we predict it will be so small that it will be negligible, and this affords a much easier calculation. But under what conditions can we make this assumption? The guideline that allows for employing this simplification is called the rule of 100. If the initial concentration divided by the equilibrium constant is greater than 100, then the denominator can be simplified. In this case, the ratio is much greater than 100, thus the simplification should be valid. But you may be asking yourself, why is this simplifying assumption guideline valid at all? To answer this question, Let's first go back and solve for x and the final equilibrium concentrations for products. To calculate the equilibrium concentration of reactant AB, we need to subtract 2x. Remember your sig fig rule for addition and subtraction. The number with the most amount of uncertainty must be reflected in your final answer. Here the 1.25 molar value is accurate to the hundredths place and the change is accurate to the hundred thousandths place. Thus, we must round the answer to the hundredths place, which is 1.25, the same value we started with, clearly demonstrating that the change is negligible. Thus, our assumption that the change, x, would be very small when compared to the initial concentration, which allowed us to simplify the denominator, was valid. Alternatively, one could use the 5% rule, which states that the change, x, must be less than 5% of the initial concentration for us to employ the simplification assumption. Using the 5% rule, we make the assumption that X will be less than 5% of initial concentration, which simplifies our denominator, solve for X, and then check to see if X is indeed less than 5% of the original concentration, which it is in this case much less. Thus, the simplification to the denominator is again proven valid. Then simply solve for the equilibrium concentrations using x as demonstrated previously. Keep in mind your professor may favor either the rule of 100 
or the 5% rule when simplifying to avoid the quadratic equation. So let's try a few type 3 exercises, which typically require a little tricky math. An equilibrium constant for this reaction is given, as well as initial amounts, which can be easily converted to concentrations within this 1.25 liter flask. Because there is no product C initially present, there is no need for a Q calculation to predict shift. It will shift to the right. Thus, the concentrations of reactants will decrease and concentrations of products will increase. This allows us to deduce the sign of change and coupled with the stoichiometric coefficients, we can write out our equilibrium expressions. At this point, we could place the equilibrium expressions into the law of mass action in an attempt to solve for x and then deduce final equilibrium concentrations. However, this is a rather challenging calculation because we cannot use the rule of 100. But fortunately, there is a much easier way to solve this problem. The key is that we were given the final equilibrium concentration of A within the word problem. Setting this equal to the equilibrium expression for A allows for a much easier calculation to solve for X. If you recognize the shortcut, then one does not have to deal with this messy calculation. At this point, X is easily obtained, which allows final equilibrium calculations for A, B, C, and D. A quick check employing the law of mass action with the calculated equilibrium concentrations yields an equilibrium constant, which matches the given value. Now let's change the wording of the problem to make it a little more difficult. We are given the same initial quantities and same volume flask, except now we are asked for the equilibrium constant. In the previous exercise, we were asked to simply obtain equilibrium concentrations with a given equilibrium constant which was extraneous information. In other words, we did not need to utilize the equilibrium constant because we did not solve the exercise this way. Instead, we used the given equilibrium concentration of A that allowed us to easily calculate X, the change, followed by obtaining the equilibrium concentrations. In this similar exercise, the key is to first recognize you have to obtain the equilibrium concentrations then obtain the equilibrium constant, which is our plan. To execute this similar exercise, we again write down our given quantities and convert to initial concentrations. We know the shift will be to the right due to the concentration of C being zero. The concentrations of A and B will go down and the concentrations of C and D will increase, which allows us to write the equilibrium expressions. Again, we realize the key to the calculation is to solve for x from the given equilibrium concentration of A, then calculate all equilibrium concentrations so that the equilibrium constant may be obtained, which matches the given k for the previous exercise. The next exercise is another pretty common problem where the key is to spot another mathematical shortcut. We begin by writing down the given concentrations and converting to molarity. At this point, we will need a Q calculation to predict the direction of shift using initial concentrations. Because Q is less than K, the reaction will shift to the right, which was explained in detail in the previous video. The direction of change is coupled with the stoichiometry of the reaction to afford the equilibrium expressions, which will equate to reactant concentrations decreasing and product concentration increasing. Placing the equilibrium expressions into the law of mass action and rewriting the denominator as 0.75 minus x squared yields quite a messy mathematical calculation. However, if we recognize that we can take the square root of both sides, this equation simplifies into a very easy algebra problem to afford the change x, which is the key to solving this exercise. The final equilibrium concentrations are now calculated for A2, B2, and AB. It's always a good idea to check and see if our final equilibrium concentrations yield an equilibrium constant that matches the given value. And it does.